Good afternoon, everyone. And we are meeting during the lunch time, after the lunch time, or before the lunch time? Before the lunch time, then I'm sure that you people are least interested in listening to me, who's especially a professor and that of management, above all. So hi, this is Dr. Alka Jain. I'm a professor and a researcher. And basically my researches are into ancient Indian management. So do we have the PPT? Oh, you have it. Ancient Indian strate strategic business management is what we are going to hear about. What do we mean by this? When it comes to ancient Indian wisdom, what do we think of? We have heard of Mahabharata, we have heard of Ramayana, we have heard of Gita, right? When it comes to equilibrium theory, we go to Gita. When it comes to the combination of value versus skills, we go to Mahabharata. When it goes to excellent corporate governance, we go to, of course, Ramayana, the Ramaraj. That is the excellent example of corporate governance. So what are we going to do today? We are not going to discuss these three. We are going to discuss those Indian pieces of literature which are less popular, which are less known to us. Let's see what they are. This is what we teach in the classes and this is what you learn in the classes. Right? You must remember these kinds of slides which are shown to you by your professors. What does it say? Oh, it talks about strategic management and we are trying to find the origin. This can be retraced to 1911. We are talking about the origin of strategic management. Right? And it was introduced in Harvard Business School as a course which was named Business Policy. And trust me, the outcome of this course was nothing but to just enhance your managerial capabilities, as the last line says. This is coming from your familiar book, right? Second sample. This is talking about the evolution. How did this concept develop in the world? Four phases, 930, ad hoc policy making. 1940, functional areas and environment. These two are coming closer to each other. Third phase, now the concept of business, the whole business and the changes in the environment, a relationship is being established, right? The fourth, the current phase, that means after 1980, there is no development in our strategic thinking. This is what this source says. This is the matrix that everyone or every student at least knows about. This is SWOT matrix given by Albert Humphrey and he gave it to us in 1960. What does this matrix say? This matrix talks about four things. Strength, S. W, weaknesses. O, opportunities. And T, threats. Everybody knows which are the internal parts, strengths and weaknesses. External parts, everyone knows it. Now let me show you something. Oh, we still need to understand the origin of this thought matrix first. Without this, the class won't start, right? So what does it say? It is given by Albert Humphrey and in 1960, in Stanford University, he collected the data from Fortune 500 companies and developed this concept. This is clear to everybody? We know this through our classes, right? Now, this is something new to my students. This is something new to perhaps the listeners also, to the audiences who are sitting here. What is this? This is a special verse which is originally written in Tamil. As I told you, I am going to discuss less popular texts. This is from Tirukkural and 48th chapter, first verse. This verse talks about, of course, the first translation is in Sanskrit, second is in Hindi, and the third for you people is in English. What does it say? 
when you start a task now what can be this task either you start an enterprise you start a new product or maybe you introduce a new service anything new that you want to do in businesses that is your task right look upon and think of all the obstacles remember threats obstacles aren't these two similar and then you may have to face in accomplishing it then after this evaluate your own strengths remember the first quadrant strengths remember your own strengths your competitor strengths the other quadrant which are threats for you the competitor is always a threat for you and it has been mentioned here and what it again mentions it competitors supporters they are also a threat for you those who keep supporting your competitor those customers who keep buying your competitors products what are they they are the threats for you right so only then you should start the desired task right this is clear and there is one more thing this second verse this is from the next chapter next chapter that is 49th chapter verse number 4 what does it say again i am coming to english translation i am skipping the sanskrit and hindi translation and if you know tamil you can go to the original version right it says if you select if you select proper resources it talks about your resources it also talks about the opportunities opportunities from the external environment resources inside and also your competitors resources so they stand for both the internal as well as external environment right this is what we are going to understand i hope these two verses are clear to my students now and to the listeners who are sitting here with me now what is the result from these two verses what do we get my me this is what we, uh, we get this is again a matrix based on those two verses what does the first quadrant say shaktim swasya nij virya let me translate it into english for you this is my own strength my own energy as a person as an organization right vetsi sadhanani this means my resources if they are enough if they are ample then of course this is my strength second quadrant if my strength is less if my energy is less if my resources are less i am weak standing in the second quadrant right then third remember that third quadrant of opportunity remember that translate opportunity to hindi and you get this term avasaram and it is written suavasaram so what does it mean strength of your competitor if it is less than you and the opportunity these two together they become the opportunity quadrant for you right now come to the last quadrant this has three components shaktim parasi your competitor strength right sadhichas tadbalam strength of the supporters of the competitor and then vigna means obstacles all these are threats for you so we see that uh, we have received a matrix from these two verses let's try to compare them now this is the comparison can you see the similarity between the two matrices now and mind you first is a recent one given in 1960 and the other for that of course i'm using two colors the black one let's see what is the origin of this matrix this is the origin and this book tirukural this was written by a saint and it was written in first century bc if you go and search for google you will get this data right so so many years ago also we were using strategic management we knew what is sort analysis just that the terminology was different just that the language was different instead of strength we are using the term shakti 
That's it. Otherwise, there is no difference between the two matrices. Do you agree with me? We have seen the similarity. What next? Oh, this is again an aphorism for my students, which is difficult for them to understand. What does it say and where I have taken it from? It has been taken from Sanang Sutra. This is again a religious philosophy text which is coming from a community that is in minority in India. Right? And what does it say? It talks about three kinds of employees. It says, well, I'm not going to read the Prakrit words, right? But let me explain the three terms to you. It talks about three kinds of employees, three kinds of purushas. What does it say? Uttam Purisa, Majjhim Purisa, Jahannu Purisa. Uttam Purisa, when translated into Hindi, means Uttam Purush, Madhyam Purush, and Jaganya Purush. This is not that Sanskrit grammar Purush. This is actual employee. Right? Getting it? So now, in English, what have we translated? We see that there are three kinds of men. The best, or the upper level of management, who are high caliber workforce. These are the ones who plan the vision and mission, who design the organization, right? Then the middle one, average or middle level workforce. We'll discuss what it does. Then the third, lower level men, supervisory level, right? These three categorization, do they sound similar to my students? Let me tell you how. Now they will sign, sound similar. This is the top, middle and supervisory level. This is taught to us in our management classes because this is how we have learned management. But at this side, this is the model that has been developed from Sanang Sutra. And there is hardly any difference up to 0.000%. Right? How similar these two are? One is modern and the other is at least 2,500 years old. Because the books, Thanang Sutra, it is believed that these are the words of Lord Mahavira, who is the god of this community, and his disciples have compiled this sutra, Thanang Sutra. Right? So 2,500 years ago, we Indians knew about these levels. We Indians knew about SWOT analysis. What, all, what other things we knew? Let's see. Come to the strategic management or strategic planning. Three levels, everybody has studied in the classes. Whoever is sitting here, corporate strategic planning. What does it mean? The top level, right? The high-valued people should be there. And these are the people who are going to design everything for the organization. Then middle level is business strategic planning. For the middle level, who are going to make the policies, how to meet the vision and mission. And then third is operational strategic planning. The supervisory level, who are actually implementing. These are the people who are actually working. Let's see if similar things are there with us in our ancient Indian wisdom. Oh, surprisingly, these are also there. See what has been given to us. Uttam, Madhyam and Jaganya Purush we have seen. Now, if you go to three more aphorisms of Thanang Sutra, you can get this model. And what does this model say? This says, as Uttam Purush, as top management, there are three types of people. Dharma Purush. The one who actually gives you the vision, the one who actually gives you the mission. Bhog Purush. These are the desirous people. Desirous for profits, desirous for the goal achievement, right? Then third, Kam Purush, these are the people who actually work for the company. These three are le the levels of the first Uttam Purush. Come to the middle level now. What do we see here? Oh, Ugra Purush. These are aggressive people who can be easily motivated. They become aggressive, they start working. Right? Then there are Bhog Purush again in this level. What is happening with them? These are the people who are desirous of rewards, awards, higher salaries, and good designations maybe, and they start working. Then again, third is Rajanya Purush. In that era, of course, these were the people who were close to the king. But 
now in our environment in our background we have to see it as our corporate relations officer maybe these are the rajanya purush today now come to the third level supervisory level we have again three sub categories servants daily wagers and partners mind you this is not your business partner these are the people who take partnership okay time is up i'm just going to wind up these are the people who actually take the percentage uh, this can also be maybe per piece wage rate right this kind of people are there now there is a question for you you see the question mark our employees from sthanang sutra they are karmachari rajyadhikari and dharmadhikari we have seen the categorization now in the modern set we again have three categorizations and we see that karmachari are operational strategic planning people and corporate strategic and business strategic they are rajyadhikari but where is the dharmadhikari there are hardly people who are found as dharmadhikari for example jamshed ji tata he was the one who was not uh, looking for monetary profits he was the one who was looking for uh, the welfare of the employees development of the nation right and this is what i will leave you people with a question and uh, these days we have developed an inferiority complex when it comes to our own mother tongue or ancient languages so we should work hard to make these languages to learn these languages and then pass them over to the next generation these should be the takeaways from the talk right thank you so much